Hello again, everybody, and welcome into Gamecock Central Radio. Chris Clark joining me, Emerson Phillips, today to give you a recap of the NFL draft that took place over the last three days. And, Chris, it was a long wait for Gamecock fans. No Gamecock selected until the third day of the draft. And finally on Saturday, Farrell Cooper went with the 19th pick of the fourth round. He was the 117th overall selection in this year's NFL draft. And Farrell Cooper headed to Los Angeles to play for the, the newer version of the L.A. Rams. I think he's got to be very excited, Chris, uh, playing in the SEC. Now he's going to travel clear across country to play in uh, Bright Lights, big city of Los Angeles, and that should be an interesting experience for him. And obviously the money that will come with it will help his bottom line. Big day for Pharaoh Cooper. It is. I'm really happy for Pharaoh. He's a guy I've covered since high school, and the thing that stood out to me about him was he's a kid that never changed, you know, from uh, just a a former two-star recruit that really saw his stock rise in high school up to a four-star guy and the recruiting interest picked up some. He just never changed, never changed in college. Um, you know, once it was obvious he was an NFL guy, you know, just kept his head down, worked, didn't complain. Obviously, uh, was was the playmaking threat last year for a team that only won three games. But he's just a great kid. A great kid, has a good family, and so I was happy to see him go. And, you know, that may be a good situation for him out there in L.A., I mean, He's a guy that I think will work hard and he'll be a good player, I think, at the NFL level. And he gets to go play with Jared Goff, the number one pick. So that's sort of an intriguing situation for him there. And, uh, you know, he can he can step in there and, and compete probably immediately. Do you feel like Cooper could have gone earlier? This is a player, Farrell Cooper, that was first-team All-SEC wide receiver, and he was first-team All-SEC wide receiver and all-purpose back by the coaches. He was just first-team receiver by the AP, but over 81 yards re- receiving per game. That was second in the SEC, uh, playing on a football team that was, frankly, you know, somewhat challenged in the vertical passing game. He played 36 games in college, and he's eighth in South Carolina's career receiving yards list, and he's sixth all-time in career receiving touchdowns with 16 for the Gamecocks. Farrell Cooper produced from the day he walked onto campus he did you know I, despite that production and, and how much i think of him yeah I, I wasn't terribly surprised about where he went i thought he could have gone a little earlier but i thought he was probably going to be a third fourth you know round type guy just based on what nfl people were saying i talked to somebody at pro day who was connected with a lot of the scouts and even some general managers and and sort of got the lay of the land. And now, of course, that can always change on draft day. Sometimes people put out stuff that isn't exactly correct for, you know, whatever motivational reasons. Uh, But, you know, he was pegged as that type of guy. And Look, there are a lot of good college football players, a lot of really good ones, and some guys that actually turn out to be better pros than college players, some guys that bust, obviously. Um, You know, I, I look back to some of South Carolina's other really good receivers and where they went in the draft. I mean, look at Bruce Ellington. He was a guy that was in that same range as Farrow Cooper, and and Bruce Ellington was an excellent player here. Uh, You know, he's faster straight line. He's not as big. Um, There there are differences in those type guys, but in terms of their production, you know, they both did a lot of really good things. Um, And teams look at measurables and stuff a lot, and Cooper is not, not really a measurables guy. You know, he's not the most polished route runner he's not the you know the fastest guy straight line but you turn on the tape and see what he did and how many big plays he made including explosive plays i mean he's got six plays over 70 yards on his resume something like that um he he does a lot of good things but you know i'd have to say i wasn't really surprised at where he went i was surprised that jarrell adams was not the first game cock taken That, that was what surprised me about the whole draft process well, not, not only was Jarrell not the first Gamecock taken, he was not even the second Gamecock taken because Brandon Shell, the offensive lineman, was taken with the 19th pick of the fifth round by the New York Jets. So it was Cooper going in the fourth to the Rams, Shell in the fifth to the Jets, and then Jarrell Adams finally picked up in the sixth round. He'll play for the New York Giants. Yeah, Shell was someone who the Jets actually traded up for a bit to, to go nab him. So uh, they probably, it seems like they thought a lot of him. I mean, instead of just letting him fall to wherever, you know, they were projected to pick, they wanted to trade up and try to nab him. Probably needed, uh, felt like they needed some tackle help and thought he was a guy that they needed to prioritize and go get. So I thought that was an interesting move. 
you know, I, I thought Shell was probably behind Adams and Cooper in terms of where he's being projected to pick fifth round. I'm, I'm not saying that's high for him, but, you know, I, I thought the other two would go before him, uh, both Adams and Cooper, and thought that, you know, it wouldn't have surprised me if Shell ended up being, you know, say a sixth round guy or even seventh. Uh, but you look at him, there's a lot to like. I mean, um, he's played right and left tackle in college. He's probably more of a right at the NFL level. He's got size, bloodlines. You know, he's a guy that's, that's come a long way. Uh, and, and even since he was in high school, a lot of people pegged him to be an NFL draft pick of some variety. Now, some thought he may end up being higher. Um, but yeah, I think he's a guy who could go and, and be successful as a, as a right tackle in the NFL, maybe not a starting caliber guy until later in his career, uh, but was an interesting pickup there, and I think that was a good a good slot for him. Recapping the 2016 NFL Draft, Emerson Phillips with Chris Clark here on Gamecock Central Radio. You can download the Gamecock Central Radio app on the App Store and on Google Play to subscribe to the podcast. Search for Gamecock Central Radio on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other popular services, or visit radio.gamecockcentral.com. So, Chris, it was Cooper in the fourth, Shell in the fifth, Adams in the sixth, and that was it for the Gamecocks. Three Gamecock players selected. Uh, but with the end of the draft, Chris, I think you know, a lot of fans think, okay, the seventh round is over, so that's it. But what happens from there when the draft ends officially? Uh, dozens of players from across the country who were not drafted are offered free agent contracts by all of these NFL teams. And we do have a handful of Gamecocks who have made it into the league by way of the free agent contract, not drafted players, but players who were offered a free agent deal at the conclusion of the draft. And so far, Chris, I've got Brandon Wilds, the running back out of Blythewood High, a good Gamecock running back, signing a deal with the Atlanta Falcons. Gerald Dixon Jr. also signing a free agent deal with the Atlanta Falcons. And Isaiah Johnson, the transfer from Kansas who played one year for South Carolina, played in the secondary. He has signed a free agent deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So just because you don't get drafted doesn't mean you're not going to be able to make it in the league, although, granted, it's an uphill battle for these undrafted free agents, but Connor Shaw went that route, and Connor Shaw has stuck in the National Football League. Yeah, you know, the the disadvantage uh, that the undrafted guys have is that teams that uh, draft these guys, you know, place more value on those selections because, you know, obviously using a draft slot is a little bit more of a valuable commodity. Whereas an undrafted free agent, I mean, you got nothing to lose. You bring him in and see where it goes. You wouldn't want to, you know, draft a guy in the third, fourth round and, and him not be a guy that can cut it uh, once you get everybody in training camp and then you have to cut him loose and you sort of wasted that pick. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the undrafted free agent routes are very valuable on both for teams and uh, for players. And, Right after the draft, even during the late stages, there's always a, a mad rush for some of these teams to try to scoop up some priority free agents. Um, I think Wilds is the most intriguing one. And I think if Wilds would have stayed healthy at South Carolina more consistently, uh, he would have had a chance to actually be drafted. Now, it wouldn't have been a guarantee. Um, it would have helped him because, A, he would have been on the field more, um, you know, to, to actually showcase what he can do. And, and B, you just don't see running backs go very high, even if they do stay healthy, even if they produce a lot. I mean, we saw, you know, running back go in the first round this year. We've seen, you know, Todd Gurley got picked very high, but you just don't see it a lot. I mean, Derrick Henry wasn't even a, a very, very, very high draft pick this year, and, and he was one of the best in the country, obviously, at Alabama. So, you know, it's just not as much of a priority position. But Wilds, when you look at what he can do, you know, he's got size, he's got good hands. You know, can block. He was, he's been a productive back when he's been healthy. So he's probably the best guy, I think, that has a chance to ultimately make a roster. You know, but at any position, it's always an uphill battle. Yeah, no question. I, it just amazes me every year how, you know, certain players are misevaluated or under-evaluated. And, you know, I would go back to Josh Norman, maybe the best cover corner in the National Football League this past season with the Carolina Panthers. He had no major college scholarship offers coming out of Greenwood High. He walked on at Coastal Carolina. And by his sophomore year there, he was an All-American. And he gets drafted in the fifth round back in 2012. And four years later, he's the best covered corner in the National Football League. So word to the wise for all these young people, where you get drafted has no reflection on how you're going to project as an NFL player. You know, the the pros evaluate you, and oftentimes they're wrong. So 
Uh, if you get discouraged, keep fighting a good fight and keep working hard, and things can work out for you. Chris, any other Gamecocks that could be signed via free agency players that were not drafted over the weekend? I think you'll see maybe some tryout guys, you know. Um, I think maybe you'll see. You know, I think one that may intrigue some teams is like a Mike Matulis, where, you know, he was one that was mentioned to me by someone at Pro Day as maybe being a tryout type guy, you know, not someone that would be drafted because – you know, Matulis has sort of a scary injury history, you know, with the two shoulder surgeries and all that for an offensive lineman. It's sort of a scary deal. But if, if teams bring him in and maybe give him a tryout and just see what happens, I mean, he's someone that's sort of intriguing. Um, that's someone I'd maybe keep an eye on as a, as a tryout type. Um, you know, Sean Carson, maybe, maybe be a tryout type. He, he was a guy that just didn't, you know, didn't see the field as much during his career. And, you know, shoot towards ACL his first carry as a true freshman and just things happened to where guys were in front of him during his career but he had certain days where he made some things happen so I think there are a couple like tryout type guys on the roster or from Carolina's uh, past roster that that may get a shot to go into training camp and, and you know maybe get a shot and see if they can make it work. Outstanding, Chris. Please keep us updated. There could be some more movement here in the next few days or a week with more Gamecock players signing free agent deals. But just three Gamecocks drafted over the weekend. Farrell Cooper, fourth round of the Rams. Brandon Shell, who started 47 consecutive games for the Gamecocks, picked with the 19th pick of the fifth round. He goes to the New York Jets. And Jarrell Adams, the tight end out of Scotts Branch High School, taken in the sixth round. He'll play for the New York Giants. Now, all these players, Chris, still have to make the roster. You know, just because you get drafted does not mean you're guaranteed a spot on the team. So all these young men that we've talked about today will have to get to work, learn NFL playbooks, and try to find a way that they can contribute to their team so they can make the 53-man roster. No doubt about it. You know, again, there have been cases of guys that have been drafted that got, you know, training camp cuts. And so that's what it's all about, just trying to get an opportunity. The guys that get drafted have a leg up. Uh, because of what teams have invested in them, and obviously that, you know, more often than not, those guys turn out, but but certainly there's a chance when guys go undrafted as well, and that's what some of these uh, game cut players will try to do. They were undrafted free agents or, or tr- tryout guys. Chris, we appreciate you taking time out of this Sunday to join us on Gamecock Central Radio. We appreciate your help. Look forward to talking with you again soon. All right, thanks, Emerson. All right, that's Chris Clark, and I'm Emerson Phillips talking NFL Draft. Three Gamecocks taken over the weekend in the 2016 NFL Draft, and we got plenty more Gamecock football talk coming your way here on Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for being with us.